Hey everybody, this is Matt with a little cash homestead. I'm just wearing my headset. I'm hoping it'll be uh, a little bit easier for you to hear me because there's some noise in the greenhouse, the chickens and the heater and a few other things like that. Plus, before I started making this video, I was jamming. So, let me show you some of the things that uh, we're doing today. Okay, so that coop right in front of me, the one with the moving blanket on it, and I've been using those moving blankets to uh, insulate the birds. If it gets really cold... Um, so those work great. Uh, save yourself uh, some money and find yourself a Harbor Freight coupon and go up there and get yourself a couple of them if you are worried about keeping your animals warm. Uh, the other thing is these moving blankets are made out of the exterior is made out of wool and wool is naturally water repellent. So you get the uh, synthetic on the inside and wool on the outsides, and it even repels water. So that's great. So we pulled down the beans, and then we pulled these boxes out here. And I just throw, you can see down the line, that I've pulled the drip tape back and pulled the plants up. And I'm just going to leave them on there. We're going to take the oscillator, probably not today. Uh, I have a limited amount of time that I'm able to work out here today. But we'll probably take the oscillator and just grind them all up and then bury them. Uh, deeper down in the box Carrots are going here. Those are Danvers half longs. We've got our elephant garlic Planted up the sides of these boxes and then in the middle we have an Adelaide uh, carrot that we got from Johnny some it's it's I Asked for varieties that would grow through the winter in a greenhouse and this was one of the recommendations. So We're gonna see how they do We've got our Danvers Halflongs over here. They've been hit with frost a few times, and they kind of like fell over and, and looked very sad. And then they got happy again. So I'm not too worried about those. New Zealand died. Uh, it just couldn't take it, but the Bloomsdale is still there. We're not going to mess with the New Zealand. I'm not going to pull it up. It's perennial. Uh, I am going to probably pull it back off the Bloomsdale a little bit. Lettuces, they, uh, they got hit a little bit. And this is a mixture of various lettuces and... They got hit a little bit, felt very sad, and then got happy again. What I wanted to show you was my son had come in and put a bunch of mulch in. That was one of his chores to do and spread it out. There's cardboard underneath there. The comfrey was here. We did a grind and grow on the comfrey. Well, first I gave away, dug up, and transplanted as, as much of it as I could possibly stand. Um, and when I transplanted it, I transplanted it with as little care as possible. And what I mean by that is I dug them up, I put them over in a corner, and then I just dumped some dirt on them and said, God willing, they're going to live or die. And that's what I did with it. It served its purpose. And I don't think even doing this that I'll probably even get rid of it. Um, chickens can't kill it. That's, that's just how tough it is. So uh, we did cardboard. We put, this has got, let's see. There's my ankle. So probably about six inches of wood on it. What I'm gonna do is, one, I wanna build a different soil here, and I want to make this suitable for something that's not comfrey. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it out. Now in this case, it's since it's not dirt, I want to accelerate its decomposition. And that's where this comes in. This is lawn starter. This is 25, 25, four, and I don't really measure it. I just go through, and I got a little hand crank thing that I could probably do this with, but in this case, I just kind of throw it out there. And we're going to throw that out there, and then water it in real good. This is going to do multiple things. One, it's going to accelerate the decomposition on the wood chips. Two, it's going to create heat. Three, it's going to release carbon dioxide. Plants in a carbon dioxide rich environment do much better because plants build cell structures out of carbon dioxide they don't uh the dirt might have nutrients in it but they don't actually you know consume the dirt they grow by consuming and uh transferring or well maybe not transferring but they pl plants grow by intaking carbon dioxide and converting that to cellular structure, which is why your biofuels are CO2 neutral because they're only gonna release, release as much CO2 as they absorbed in their lifetime, which is essentially 
what we're doing here. So we're gonna prime this out. And again, I'm not measuring it because I got a whole lot of, uh, of wood there. It's the same concept as if you were gonna do a straw bale garden and you wanted to prime out your straw bales. Similar thing. So I'm just putting, this is a 25, 25, four. I didn't wanna go with a strictly nitrogen fertilizer because I wanted to try and burn in or get some of these other um, macronutrients into the uh, dirt that's gonna form or the compost that's gonna form. And the other thing is, wood is going to rob that nitrogen. So I need high levels of nitrogen. And plus you can get like lawn starter, starter. and yeah, this is a synthetic, don't, uh, you know, chew me up in the comments section about it, because all I want to do here is accelerate decomposition. This is our first and second layer, which is cardboard and wood chips, and when we get all the way down there, I'm going to make some changes to that uh, coop there. One, I got some really nice wheels to put on it, and two, um, they got a broken water pipe, and I have to fix that. So we'll be rolling that over. That's another great thing about that curved design is they're super easy to roll over. So you can just roll it over, make any repairs you need to it. And then to get the birds back in the cage is like no hassle. You just don't feed them when you plan on fixing it. And then with a little care, a little rummage around the greenhouse without getting into your crops, you just keep an eye on them. And if you two, have all your materials ready and three, work quick. <laughs> And then you just throw a little feed on the ground in the, you know, within the footprint of the tractor and they'll come right to it and you just roll the tractor back over on top of them. Uh, I've done that a couple of times with repairs that I made to the Cornish Cross over there. So did we just do some uh, lawn starter, uh, lawn, lawn starter fertilizer, 25, 25, four. I'm going to soak this down really, really well. And as we go through this process, we'll be creating heat. We'll be creating carbon dioxide, and we will be, I should say, we will be releasing heat. We will be releasing carbon dioxide, and we will be accelerating the decomposition of this wood. So we're basically going to get a layer all through the greenhouse of this wood because I have a huge ton of it. Um, maybe by the time we're done, we won't, but other areas I think are going to need less mulch. We're doing, you know, ground prep in this area. But we are going to mulch everything until that pile is out, uh, whether it be any of the three gardens. And, but this area in particular, I need to make um, ground that I can grow marketable crops in. All right, I'm gonna water it down. This is Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again.